Turkey has inherited a country faces. Turkey has inherited a party uh, in 1994 when he became leader that had been divided since the arms trial of 1970 and he unified that party and he goes now with a unified party, leaving a unified party behind him. That too is a significant achievement. Um, interesting enough, I think that's the most significant achievement of, of all and would seem to be, uh, and, uh, as well as something you said in the break, in the break when you pointed out that um, his other great achievement was to move the party from, if you like, that sort of pan-nationalist consensus or policy that he inherited from um, Andrew Reynolds and to other people, and he turned it into a pluralist uh, policy. He actually integrated a lot of Bruton's policies into it, John Bruton's policies, and he turned it into an all-Ireland uh, pluralist policy which integrated the Protestant. Uh, the good, the good news, the bad news today is that we've lost uh, a very, very great T-shirt. The good news is that um, you should be careful what you wish for. And um, when Enda Kenny asks for election, he should take on board the fact that, as you said there, and it's true, it's the biggest political legacy. During this in this campaign, Fianna Fáil found out for the first time that they didn't have to assassinate a leader, um, and that's an important lesson for Fianna Gael too, under media pressure. Um, Dukes was taken down, Bruton was taken down, and Noonan was taken down, largely under a lot of media sniping. Albert Reynolds and Charles Hoy were taken down, and by the way, I don't think it's the right thing to, I don't think it's good to take down any T-shirt unless you prove major corruption, which I don't think is the, uh, was proven in the case of Hoy, either that level. Um, I think it's a very bad thing to take down the T-shirt at the behest of the media. I think that the Irish Times reporting was solid, and I, I, I don't share that, some of the Fianna Fáil paranoia, I think. I think the Irish Times was fair, fair reporting, but I think it took on in recent months with the entry of some British-based newspapers and indeed some Irish newspapers that, that took on a symbiotic sort of feeding frenzy between man and the media, which created a really nasty, vilifying, filthy climate around the t-shirt. I think there, it was that there, feeling of man on Irish that, 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 that made him so sad. Well, he, you could equally argue that Mr. Ahern uh, bought himself a lot of years uh, in office uh, while knowing more than we know. Uh, you know, the setting up of the tribunal was the longest political touch kick in history, and it bought him a lot of time. Uh, so, for Ireland, looking for the peace process, part two. You uh, know. Well, um, uh, I, I don't. Uh, I don't deny his uh, leader in power. I don't deny his, his contribution in the, in the peace process. But you know, have a look at. Well, I mean, what would have happened in Sweden, or in France, or in Britain? Uh, what would have happened in any EU member state if this information had come into the public domain? Maybe you'd get away with it initially. I don't know if you would. In France. Uh, far worse allegations were made by Jacques Chirac and uh, it was ruled that legally he couldn't be made answerable while he held office as president. Well, uh, maybe that's not a particularly good example, uh, um, Vincent, because... as I admire Brian Lenahan, the Lennon brothers, Willie O'Dea and um, Dermot Ahern for the way they stood firm behind Ahern. That's the first time in modern Irish history that a major Irish political party has told the media to take a flying jump and has stood behind its leader. He wasn't pushed, he wasn't assassinated, he wasn't stabbed. He went, he picked his time, he went. I think that has huge implications for the health of Fianna Fáil. It's going to be a much healthier party because of that long show of unity under fire. So important. Stand up guys and stand up girls do matter in life. But another word yeah. for that is defending the indefensible. Absolutely. And so many of them were seen to defend the indefensible. You know, Mary Hannafin, Butter Wooden Mountain or Mount. You, 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 like you, you wouldn't mind you defended the Soviet Union. You wouldn't mind you defended the Soviet Union or the Soviet system for the last part of ten years of the Iron Lady of Korea. It's a bit rich coming from you. Connor would say anything. But Mary Hannafin that's a factual case. And she comes defending the indefensible. But perhaps supposing that he was telling the truth today, you know, 
always say who get the face you deserve at 50. I mean, what is he, 55? I, it's hard to lie that barefacedly. He looked at us and he said, I did not take corrupt play, payment. He clearly believed it. I believe him. I think the Irish people believe him in the sense that he did not abuse public office for private gain or corrupt the planning process, which anyway, ministers of finance are not the people to do that. County councils are the people to do that. If he was not corrupt, if he is not corrupt, Pat, then in fact a kind of a big injustice will have been seen to have been done today. Well, I, I, I have never accused him uh, own of being corrupt and the tribunal will make that decision. The problem is that contradiction was heaped on contradiction. His position had become untenable because you couldn't prosecute the normal business of politics because of this miasma hanging over Mr. Ahern. Uh, he said Captain Turner, was that fair again? Because if, if, the, if a media campaign sort of, and I mean, and there's good and bad media stuff, but if, the, if you throw mud at someone and then you accuse them of having mud in their face and being a dirty young fella, it's like a teacher in school beats a boy and the boy starts crying, then he beats him for crying. I mean, the media it wasn't, it it wasn't, wasn't just the media campaign. campaign. It wasn't just the media campaign. They have shown that he has been rolling around in the mud and, uh, you know, you can't blame the media uh, for the fact that some of it has stuck. Now, maybe he has explanations for it. I mm. feel if he had that he would have come into the house today and he would have explained them. All right, we've got to leave it there. Coming up next on Nightly News, our first preview of tomorrow morning.